Hello, I'm super excited to be speaking to you today. Um, it's a wonderful day to celebrate womanhood, to celebrate every woman out there. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to be speaking to you on a day like this. The thing for this year is breaking the bias against women. I'll be speaking from the perspective of a minister of God, of someone who uh, connects with God, has fellowship with God, and who God speaks to, you know, um, every now and then. For women, we've been through a lot over the years. However, since the existence of time, it's been from one challenge or the other, you know, all of us trying to fit in into our space in the world and in society. There is one factor that I want us to look at as we intend to break all this bias and all these things that stand in our way of fitting into God's plan and exact purpose for womanhood. Um, we'll be looking at that from the scriptures. However, before we go into the scriptures, I want to say once more, Congratulations to every woman out there. You've come a long way. I'll define womanhood as something you gradually grow into. And um, before you become a woman, it means that a change would have happened. We all come into this world as babies, as infants, and then we become toddlers. And then from there, we graduate into teenage years, into the girl child, and from there, we become women. But it's not about the age, it's how much of growth you have experienced. Womanhood is, is a state of being passionate, is a state of resilience, is a state of so many things. However, it's a state that needs to be enjoyed, not endured. While you are being patient, while you are persevering, while you are pushing through, you must also pull through. And so I'm going to encourage us, move on, don't be tired. From the scriptures, that's where we are going to find the word today. And I want you to go with me as we look at the book of Isaiah, chapter 40. It's a passage of scriptures that I've read over and over again. And I would like you to see with me the first verse of Isaiah 40. It says, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Say it, your God. It talks about comfort. It talks about giving yourself that 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 peace of mind that confidence knowing that the lord your god gives you comfort a peace that passes all understanding it says speak you comfortably to jerusalem and cry unto her that our warfare is accomplished that's why i said being able to fit into god's plan and purpose for our life as women requires that we have a background with God because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. And he's the master planner. And so when he draws the plan, you have to trust him enough to take you through all the twists and turns of life, through all the twists and turns of womanhood. A lot of us are still navigating through it. A lot of us are still growing. And every day we grow. It's a wonderful space. It's a wonderful stage that we all get to in life i am growing i believe every person every woman every other person is also growing into it it says our warfare is accomplished when you know before you get into that before you start trying to wear that shoe when you know that god is wearing it with you when you know that the lord is on the ship with you and it's not going to sink that there's a master sailor, that there's a perfect captain that is riding with you and is not going to sink. It gives you that balance that you need. It gives you that confidence that you need. It says that our iniquity is pardoned. And in this place, I'd like to believe that it's in advance, not just before. The ones before, they are pardoned. The ones right now, they are pardoned. The ones after, they are pardoned. How loving can that God be? I want you to introduce it into your, into your efforts. We all are making efforts. Let's introduce him into that effort. Then it becomes easy for us. Then it takes away frustration. Because at that point, when you have tried and you are doing your best to actually go beyond and then there is a supernatural power that is called grace. And so when a woman filled with grace steps into a place, there's a, quite, there's a wide gap 
In fact, the best way to step into womanhood in full is to actually step into the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our everlasting King of glory. When you step in with that grace, there is something that distinguishes you. It dignifies you. It gives you dignity beyond human comprehension. And then they begin to wonder, how come she walks and steps into this place with so much light? Let your light, I'm speaking to every woman out there, including her speaking to you, let your light so shine that it blinds them all, that it comes into a place that, you know, there was a passage, there was a time in the scriptures uh, um, uh, when Jesus Christ was being transfigured, that the disciples could not look up. They all bowed down because his light was so bright. I'm not saying that you, you shine your light in a way that causes catastrophe. I'm saying that let the light, let it speak for itself. Before you open your mouth to speak, let the grace of our loving Savior, let it begin to radiate anywhere you go. That before you say something, they want to listen. Praise the Lord. And it says, for she had received of the Lord's hands double for all her sins. That is, you have received forgiveness in advance. In fact, in double force, God is not a man. There are lots of women out there. The reason why you cannot stand up, the reason why you can't come into the full, that, that you can't fully come into that space that the Lord wants you to be, is because you are afraid to come out. It's because you care. It's because you think, oh, what are they going to say? Oh, what is he going to say? I want you to remember that in the book of Genesis, when Adam and Eve had eaten of the fruit which the Lord commanded them not to eat, that they were going into hiding. But the Lord had forgiven them in advance. It was because they had eaten themselves that brought the retardation, that brought the limitation, that brought the curses upon their life. Because God does not stop on his appointments. God keeps to time. He keeps to appointment. He was always coming to them at the cool of the day. And even when they had sinned, he didn't stop coming. So when he says that you have received in advance... That, that forgiveness is talking about, just I'm using that as an example, that you should look at what Adam and Eve, the kind of relationship they enjoyed with God. That even after they had done what he asked them not to do, that he still kept to his appointment. So you are the one who is not coming, you are the one who is not standing up. You are the one who is not speaking for yourself. You are the one who is not rising up. The Lord is waiting for you. The Lord is waiting for you. That business prosperity is waiting for you. All it needs from you is your business prospect. All it needs from you, um, I, I want to, I, I'm trying to put it in a way that you understand. It's your business idea. It's you coming out to say, God, I am ready. And it takes over from you. Because the Lord blesses. The increase is from the Lord. You make your effort. Yes, we are trying. Come out. Woman, you are everything you see, the Lord has put in you everything that you need. Anything that can speak or stand against you, he has forgiven you in advance. Oh, I'm not strong enough. He has forgiven that. He's not thinking about that. No, I think I'm too short. I think I'm 